Remaining in Britain, another of the groups of inhabitants contemporary with Merlin's alleged existence must be briefly examined. The Picts of what is now northeastern Scotland were a mysterious insular Celtic Brythonic people who raided their neighbours, especially in the decades after the Romans left Britain in around 410 AD. Other than their martial nature and construction of monumental standing stones, we know of their intricate art in carvings and in descriptions of their tattoos. These regularly featured animals with a focus on snakes, however they also appeared to have revered the strength of bulls, their closeness to nature seemingly being a common feature among all insular Celts. In early British Christianity, the taming of nature and of horned beasts was a recurring feature. This can be seen as an allegorical bringing to heel of older Druidic beliefs. One such example appears in the miracle attributed to the Strathclyde-based St Kentigern, known as Mungo, 518-614 AD, who, without oxen to plough his fields, was able to command wild stags to take the yoke and do the job for him. This mastery of the wild by an adherent of Jesus Christ can be read as both a miracle of the incoming faith and a conquest of nature and the people of the stag as the folk of this area which encompasses modern-day Glasgow and Scotland's western coast were known. Further back in British history, to around 2250 BC, deer were associated with fertility in the particular case of the Dagenham Idol. The idol is thought to represent a mysterious nude god, with a hole for a phallic peg which is now left unfilled. The 18-inch Scots Pine Idol was found in marshland on the north bank of the River Thames to the east of London in Dagenham in 1922. It was buried in a layer of peat just under 10 feet below ground level near the skeleton of a deer. It is thought it was buried with the deer as part of a votive fertility sacrifice. Turning to mainland Europe, one of the leading Celtic deities across the centre and north of the continent was Kernunos. The god is often portrayed as being horned and is believed to be the antlered figure on the Gundestrup cauldron, thought to date from 200 to 300 BC. It was discovered in pieces with other parts stacked inside the base in 1891 in the small Danish settlement of Gundestrup. On the inner part of the cauldron, the god figure is shown with a torque in one hand and a horned serpent in the other, and appears as a kind of master of nature. The mythology is somewhat scant, but he is believed to have been a nature god and is associated with fertility. Kernanos has come to be associated with the notion of the horned god and the green man, and is a significant feature of modern neo-paganism and Wiccan beliefs. In the medieval period, or at least set in the Middle Ages, there were several examples of horned god facsimiles, wild men or legends or forest-dwelling spirits or men. These include Hearn the Hunter, the Green Man, the Green Knight, the Wild Hunt, the mythology of Odin, the literary character Grendel, Robin Hood and Herowood the Wake. Hearn the Hunter was a legendary anthropomorphised deer-headed apparition that haunted Windsor Great Park and Forest. The ghostly figure, who had antlers on his head, was said to ride a horse across the park and forest, rattling chains and terrifying cattle. He was also associated with the mythological and folkloric phenomenon of the Wild Hunt. The concept of the Wild Hunt, a ghostly host streaming across the night sky, has ancient roots. Whilst it is popularised in Northern European folklore, particularly in the Norse, Anglo-Saxon and Germanic traditions, it has representations in other belief systems, particularly those of an Indo-European root. Its echoes can be seen in Vedic beliefs from India and even in Abrahamic faiths. The story of Santa Claus and his flying reindeer-drawn sleigh could even owe its origin to the legend. The leader of the Wild Hunt has changed over the centuries, with Hearn the Hunter and the Norse god Odin being described as the head huntsman. The terrifying procession can be seen as a representation of the souls of the dead rampaging across the sky and visible to the living. As such, it has connections with the Celtic festival of Sarwin, and therefore Halloween, as well as Christmas. The Sarwin connection to the Wild Hunt can be seen in the understanding of what the festival represents. In some Celtic traditions, particularly the Gaulish Samonios, a cognate of Sarwin, it was effectively New Year's Day, as the dark preceded the light. The event was seen not just as a day of the dead, but one in which the dead might be seen to rise or contact the living. William Shakespeare's 1597 play The Merry Wives of Windsor tells of the hunt as led by Hearn in Act 4, Scene 4. It read, There is an old tale goes that Hearn the hunter, sometime a keeper here in Windsor Forest, 
Doth all the winter time at still midnight walk about an old oak with great ragged horns, and there he blasts the tree and takes the cattle, and makes milk kine yield blood and shakes a chain in a most hideous and dreadful manner. You have heard of such a spirit, and well you know, the superstitious idle-headed eld received and did deliver to our age this tale of Hearn the Hunter for a truth. Shakespeare based his account on earlier folklore, but it is not known how faithfully he stuck to the original legend. In 1792, author Samuel Ireland added more flesh to the bones of the legend. He posited that Hearn was the ghost of a disgraced former keeper in the forest called Richard Horn, who hanged himself on a tree. This links with the story of Odin and the world tree Yggdrasil, as we shall see later. And it is worth noting that the earliest edition of The Merry Wives of Windsor does render the name as Horn rather than Hearn. Other scholars have highlighted the similar sound of the word Hearn and the first four letters of the god Kernanos and claim it is a corruption of the word. The Old English word Hearn meaning horn and the Proto-Indo-European Kern root meaning horn or bone is cited as further evidence for this hypothesis. There is also a potential astronomical origin of the legend, with the association with the constellation of Orion. Hearn could also be so ancient as to be a continuation of a Paleolithic deity. The Green Man can be seen today in a number of churches as a pagan oddity in contrast with Christian surroundings. The character appears as a male face with leaves sprouting from it, or vines erupting from the mouth. There is a fine example tucked away in St Albans Cathedral in Hertfordshire, but where does this strange manifestation come from? There are a number of potential historical sources for the Green Man motif. Among these are the ancient Egyptian god of fertility, the dead and resurrection, Osiris, who was often portrayed as being green. He also wielded the shepherd crook and flail, or Haka and Nikaka, powerful symbols of pharaohship that bring together the mastery of animals and the harvesting of crops. Some consider the fact that the green man is usually represented as a disembodied head to be an allusion to the Norse mythological character Mimir, who was beheaded by his Vanir captors following the War of the Norse Gods. Mimir was said to guard a sacred spring of knowledge and wisdom beneath the roots of the world tree Yggdrasil. Odin was permitted to use the spring after the sacrifice of one of his eyes. Following the beheading of Mimir, Odin treated the head with preservative herbs and carved runes into it so he could revive Mimir's spirit to communicate with and receive wise counsel from him. Ultimately, the green man could be seen as what it is, an anthropomorphic representation of nature itself, anchoring man as a thing of nature rather than something separate from it. Robin Hood and his legendary wife Maid Marian began as separate folkloric entities and were strongly associated with May Day customs. May Day itself has pagan origins and centres around abundance and vegetation as the start of the summer, with the Beltane festival seen as a fire blessing of cattle and other livestock. This in turn had similarities to the Roman festival of Floralia, a celebration of the goddess of flowers, and Mayuma, which hailed Dionysus and Aphrodite. This highlights that these ceremonies and rituals, such as the Queen of the May and dancing around the clearly phallic maypole, have echoes of fertility rites that are truly ancient and inextricably wedded to nature. There are many tellings, retellings and embellishments of the Robin legends, but his woodland dwelling after a fall from grace of some kind mirrors the tale of Merlin and his retreat to the forest. Hereward the Wake was an Anglo-Saxon nobleman born in Bourne, Lincolnshire, in around 1035. He was an early and effective thorn in the side of the invading Normans after the decisive Battle of Hastings in 1066. Using the Isle of Ely as his base, Hereward roamed the East Anglian wetlands known as the Fens, attacking those loyal to William the Conqueror. Hereward took up arms after the Normans were said to have executed his brother and impaled his head on a spike at the gates of his house. Hereward was said to have pursued the killers and, with the help of a companion, slaughtered 15 of them. Hereward later allied with the Danish king Swain in the sacking of Peterborough Abbey. He also joined with Morcar, the former Saxon Earl of Northumbria, in the ultimately forlorn hope of pushing the Normans out of England. Hereward and Morcar were pressed by the Normans and forced to flee to Ely to make what might have been a last stand. Hereward passed into legend at this encounter, as he was said to have set a wooden tower alight which contained a Norman hired witch who was hurling curses at the Saxon rebels. Ultimately, the Normans closed in on the island of Ely and Hereward's ally Morcar, but Hereward escaped into the Fens and was never officially seen again. There are many legends and embellishments of Hereward's tale, and some historians believe these helped form the later legend of Robin Hood. 
Hereward was said to have been the offspring of Leofric, Earl of Mercia, and the legendary Lady Godiva, a storied parentage that added another layer of mythological gloss to the figure of Hereward. Speculation over his fate continues to this day, with some claiming that he was killed by a retinue of Norman knights. Others said he went into exile, possibly in Scotland, but the most romantic explanation is that he lived on as an outlaw in the Fens. This is the second video in a series of three that will examine the European wild man and the horned god. Join me in the next one where I will focus on more literary and mythological examples of the phenomenon, modern versions of it, and the philosophical underpinning of a concept as old as time. The first video in this series is also linked in the description below. For now, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. And thank you for watching.